Welcome back. Today we are going to uh, start and um, hopefully get through most of a new unit. And that unit is going to address uh, basis functions in an, uh, in, 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 an, in, in a unified manner. Okay. Uh, the idea is that the most standard basis functions, which are based upon Lagrange uh, polynomials, are constructed in two and three dimensions, uh, essentially through a process that is called a tensor product uh, representation, right? And this is done by first constructing basis functions in 1D and then essentially extending them to multiple dimensions. So we're going to take that approach and um, in, in doing so present a hopefully unified picture of, of basis functions that we have already been using. So, all right. So we're going to look at a, um, I'll call it just that, we're going to look at a unified view of basis functions in one through three dimensions. All right. Okay. The, uh, the the approach is to start with one D, and, um, and 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 work up from there. I should also mention that we will start in this segment by looking at this approach for uh, Lagrange polynomials. Okay, so we're going to look at Lagrange polynomials and let's start by recalling 1D, right? In 1D, let's uh, look at what our uh, linear basis functions look like. If that's our element in 1D, we're talking about linear, so this is what we have. Um, of course, we construct everything in our uh, bi-unit domain, okay? So, in this bi-unit domain, we have C. I'm going to call it uh, C1 uh, just to prepare ourselves for smoothly moving on to two and three dimensions, okay? So, this is C1 equals minus 1, C1 equals 1, okay? And, of course, this is 0, all right? In this setting, we know very well what our linear uh, functions are. Okay, that's meant to be linear, okay? So this is n1, and we have n2. Okay, and of course, they satisfy the usual properties, chronic or delta, and the fact that they evaluate to 1 when added up at any point C1 in the domain, okay? So these are linears, and you recall how they were written. They were written as N1 of C1 equals uh, 1 minus C over 2, and N2, C1 equals 1 plus C1 over 2, okay? And then we went on to develop quadratics. Right? We have our element. C1 is minus 1. C1 is 0. C1 is 1, okay? And in this uh, case, our uh, first basis function looks like this, right? That is N1. 
N2 looks like that, right? That's N2 and N3, as you will recall, is that, okay? All right, and the expressions for them were N1 function of C1 is uh, 1 minus C1 times C1 over 2, N2 equals 1 minus C1 square, um, it's just 1 minus uh, C1 square, and then N3 is uh, 1 plus C1 times C1 divided by 2. Okay? All right. So we know these well enough, and uh, the reason I put them down here is uh, just to get us started. Uh, you recall that when we developed um, the finite element formulation in 1D, we also presented the general Lagrange polynomial formula, right, for uh, arbitrary order, right? And that formula was the following, right? So. Um, So when we develop Lagrange polynomials of order, so we're going to write this out for Lagrange polynomials of order k, right? And you will recall from our uh, treatment of the problems up to now, and actually from just looking at this uh, at these sketches of our basis functions, that the uh, order of the polynomial bears a relation to the number of degrees of freedom on the element. Right? And what is that relation? The relation is that the, that the order of the polynomial is the number of degrees of freedom minus 1. So we're going to write that out, and we, we previously called this number of nodes in the element. Uh, I'm going to use that sort of idea, except I'm going to call this number of nodes in 1D. Okay? So it's number of nodes in 1D minus 1, which gives us the order of the polynomial. The reason I'm bringing in this um, reference to 1D is, as you will see, we will use the 1D construction to build our constructions in uh, two and three dimensions. Okay? All right. So, uh, so the polynomials of order K are the following, right? So, we know by looking at that, uh, at, at, at what we've written out there, that we can, we have N, uh, A, right? Uh, function of C1 equals the product index B running from 1 to number of nodes in 1D, okay, um, except that B is not equal to A, okay. Now, the product that we need to have here is the following. It's C1 plus C1 at A divided by C1 at A minus C1 at B. All right, and if you test this out for um, any of these um, functions I've put up there for linears or quadratics, you should see that it works. Okay? So this is the setting we have. Now, we are going to generalize this, right? Essentially, what we are going to see and what we've actually seen already is that when we go to two and three dimensions, and we did look at two dimensions briefly, uh, we're going to see that we essentially construct those bilinear and trilinear or biquadratic and triquadratic functions, as we will also see by forming what we call tensor products of these uh, functions in 1D, okay? Um, also, what I'm going to do is that because I'm going to now use these to construct our functions in, in higher dimensions, 
I am going to uh, put a tilde on everything I've written here, okay? This is just so that I can use uh, n itself for the actual functions in higher dimensions, okay? The same function, I'm just putting tildes on all of them. All right, so this is what we have. Right. So let's go, let's move on now to tensor product functions. in, uh, let's look at 2D, okay? Now, in 2D, we already uh, did see the bilinear shape functions, okay? So, recall the bilinears. Right? Um, the bilinears were the following. Um, I'll sketch one of them, right? So, because we want to make use of this perspective view, C1. C2, okay? And um, we label the nodes uh, here or degrees of freedom here as A equals uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I will draw just um, N4, okay? And you recall that it is bilinear, so it, it, it slopes down linearly to 0, along each coordinate direction, okay? And it also slopes down to zero in this dimension, right? Uh, and this dependence is actually not quite linear, but it looks something like that, okay? All right, so, so this is N4, okay? So this uh, shape, this basis function I'm showing you is N4, okay? Um, and, uh, okay, so this is what we have. I'm, I'm going to directly just write out the, the general Lagrange um, polynomial formula using these tensor product, uh, using the tensor product approach, okay? In order to do this, um, let's note that the kind of uh, bilinear shape function we are constructing here uh, has, uh, n, n, e degrees of freedom, right? We're constructing four uh, basis functions because, because this element has four degrees of freedom. And in this case, n, n, e equals four, okay? Note, of course, that n, n, e equals four is a uh, number of nodes in one dimension square for the linear case, right? So if you take the linear um, basis functions, right? And well, the, the, they involve two degrees of freedom. The bilinears in for, for the 2D case involve four degrees of freedom, right? So that's n n one d the whole square. What we are going to do here is, is observe that um, we always have some n a c1, C2, right, it's a function of C1 and C2, okay, is going to be written as a product of n tilde B C1 times n tilde C C2, okay, for B, 
comma c equals uh, one up to number of nodes in one D. Okay. This is the general formula, all right? And uh, A, of course, here, A, which is on the left-hand side, equals one to number of nodes in the element in 2D. Okay? It's really as simple as that, right? And it is the, f and, and this sort of formula where we're really taking those basis functions we developed on the previous slide uh, that we labeled n tilde, right? We're taking them in each dimension, right? Along each of the dimensions, uh, the C1 and C2 di uh, dimensions, and simply forming a product with them, right? This sort of a product is what we mean by the tensor product formula. Okay? With this sort of view, what we observe now is that N1, C1, C2 is um, the product of N1 tilde, C1, N, I'm sorry, N1 tilde and N It's a product of n1 n to learn in the c1 direction and n2, sorry, n1 tilde again in the c2 direction. All right? All right, and that becomes clear by just looking at it. So this goes on. Uh, well, actually, let me write all of them. n2, N2 is what? In the N1, sorry, in the C1 direction, in the C1 dimension, it is N2 tilde C1, N1 tilde C2, right? This goes on, and we finally write N4, okay? N4. C1, C2 is, can you work it out? No. It's N2 tilde, sorry, it's N1 tilde again. N1 tilde, C1, N2 tilde, C2. Okay? It's as simple as that. Right? Okay. And you recall we did indeed look at the bilinear case, right? And now if when we go on to higher, when we go on to basis functions of higher order, all we need to do is to go back to the polynomial, uh, sorry, to the 1D uh, construction and uh, figure out what order we need to have there. And it's the, the order in 1D that we need in order to construct uh, basis functions in 2D is simply the square root of the degrees of freedom we want to have, right, in 2D. Okay, so we construct those 1D basis functions and then form the sort of tensor product with them. 